So I'm Leah Lemmel. I'm the Assistant Vice President over Development within the University Technology Office here at ASU. And we use data not only within our business intelligence group, who oversees the dashboards and building reports, but also to drive a lot of our web design and analytics. So data for us, uh, there's been a few aha moments. Obviously with web analytics, seeing the traffic and where things are hitting on your site is always enlightening to find out what your customers are really looking for. But also in looking at student data, sometimes realizing what things are really causing issues for them and where you can put more attention and provide more personalized information can really be found in the engagement and the data of how they're using your systems. I'm John Rome, the Deputy CIO at Arizona State University in the CIO office. And I deal with data every day, whether it's operational data or strategic data, helping the CIO and the university understand data and use it better and more strategically. You know, the, the foundation of the analytic capability at Arizona State, I think really started with the data warehouse. We built an enterprise data warehouse back in the mid 90s and have been building on top of it since that time. And, you know, we put strategic data into the data warehouse, whether it's student data, financial data, HR data. Uh, we look at data as an asset, and because it's an asset, it's very important for us to be able to understand it, to use it to, our, to the best of our capability. My name is David Burge. I'm the Executive Director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, and we use data on a daily basis. We, we seek to create a data-informed culture with everything we do, whether it's tracking the number of inquired students from a particular geo market, the number of admitted students within a certain ability band, the number of deposited students for one of our specific programs. We're always looking in on the data to make sure we're on track to make enrollment targets. My name is Frederick Corey. I'm Vice Provost, Dean of University College and Director of the School of Letters and Sciences. We use data every day to make decisions that will benefit our students. I focus primarily on undergraduate students, particularly as Vice Provost. We try to make sure that each student is in the right academic major, and we do that through assessments and through uh, an analysis of a student's talents and abilities. We use data to improve the retention of our students, to improve graduation rates, and to improve student success. We want our students to be in the right math class, in the right Eng English classes, and we use data in order to make those assessments. The biggest change in five years has been the presence, the, the more ubiquitous presence of the dashboards for the people who are not necessarily doing the kind of work that I do, but who are um, who, with whom I want to be in conversation. So I have always had access to the data from the tables, kind of the raw data, if you will. But to have a conversation with somebody who maybe doesn't, um, doesn't have that access or doesn't have that skill set um, is sometimes difficult. So you're starting by educating then um, and, and trying to help that person understand what data you're seeing. Um, now, more and more often, we find that the people we're talking to have seen that data because they're able to get it through the dashboard, through um, the much less, um, less scary tool set. Um, so when I go into that conversation, I may have more data or my, I may have more details to talk to them about, but they've at least become comfortable with or they know that they can see those same numbers if they were to go out to that dashboard. And that makes a big difference in just the conversation and the time that it takes to educate. Well, I think that, you know, on top of the data warehouse that we've built, uh, it's, you've had to be a rocket scientist to really try to get access to this data. And about five years ago, we started building dashboards. And I think dashboards have really been a game changer at ASU. It's lowered the cost of consumption of information here. No longer do I have to be a specialist to get access to data. Now I can, like going to a Yahoo page to check my stocks, I can now go to the dashboard page on campus and just click to get the information I need, whether it's financial data, data whether it's research data, whether it's student data, all helping us out. So some of the best things we've been able to do with data are with some of our 360 tools and our retention dashboards so that we can reach out to students on that personalized level to make sure that they're going to be successful with the university. From a development standpoint within our um, web designs and everything, those analytics have really helped drive us to put the heat in the right areas on websites, what people really want. 
and help find what they're having a hard time looking for by looking at focus groups and surveys and continuing to look at the analytics and data. And then now we look at, okay, now that we have all this data, how can we predict things a little bit better? Where can we know how a student might have issues in the future before they actually encounter those and it's too late to make them successful? So I think data started as just what did you need to report to the state government? And over time it's grown to be able to get more and more data to help you make your day-to-day -day decisions and figure out what you should do as your next priority. Over the past few years, we've been able to use data much more efficiently. We've got dashboards that will help us assemble, reassemble, and yet again reassemble the data in order to get at some of the puzzles we're trying to solve. The more transparent we are with our data, the more nimble and effective we can be as an institution. We want to enroll in the ground-based programs 9,600 new freshmen each fall. We want to enroll more than 6,000 new transfer students. You can't do that with one office. You can't do that with one organization. You have to have partners. And ASU has done a really good job creating an environment where we're, we're partnered together for new student enrollment goals. And sharing data is important. And the ability for any college or department to drill down into their specific recruitment pool is, is going to be essential for us to achieve those goals. The other thing that's kind of nice from our end is that we can see who has been accessing the data. So I can tell you how many times not only I've accessed it, but that you have accessed it or user X, Y, or Z. So we can see who is truly using data to inform their decisions. It, it just makes, the, again, it facilitates, it moves the conversation along faster because you don't have to debate the nuances of, you know, is this really the, the most predictive factor? Um, whether it's the most predictive or not, it is a factor, and you can see that in the data uh, very easily. Uh, so I guess maybe the data, um, I haven't seen so many instances where the aha moment was something that we didn't know at all, because there's a lot of institutional wisdom here, um, a lot of people who have done their jobs for a long time and have a very strong sense of what they're doing and why they're doing it. But to have the data there as a conversation point, as a starting point, uh, allows everybody to sort of, you, you can set aside the what ifs, the, the speculative um, portion of the conversation and just um, talk about actions and targets and um, what, what can be taken, yeah, where it can be taken from there. In narrative theory, we look at the meta-narratives, the grand narratives that guide the whole project, but we also look at the small, everyday, everyday lived narratives of individual people. And data can be used in much the same way. We can use data to take a look at the big picture, at where is the university going, how are our graduation rates, how are our retention rates. But we should also look down at the individual students to see how the numbers tell the stories of individual students and how they're faring at this university. Well, it, it, within our office, we've, we've always had a series of reports that we use to monitor where we are and explain to senior level leadership where uh, things stand in terms of new student enrollment. Uh, but over the course of the last two years, we've been expanding the amount of available data through our dashboards, through even something as simple as regularly emailed reports to colleges and other stakeholders to, uh, to help us define and shape our incoming class. We've added elements uh, from financial assistance and we've layered that on top of application data. We've brought in elements from university housing, orientation, the number of times a student has logged in to my ASU or the private social network Devil to Devil, creating this holistic picture of all of the factors that can influence new student enrollment. Well, one area that, that the data analysis should help us with is some of the systems that organize curriculum aren't the most straightforward, right? The original data designs and, and databases behind those are in structures that make it a little hard to do more analysis. It may work well processing an individual audit, but it's hard to look at the whole university perspective. So when looking at big data, because those systems are so complex, that will help us extract that information and maybe find more relationships of where we could simplify our curriculum or where students may be struggling at different points within each major. Over the years, I think we've become much more sophisticated with data. When Arizona State University first started worrying about retention in a serious manner, people would ask to see the data, as though asking to see the data were a way of not accomplishing our goals. It was a delay tactic. 
And now I think people are genuinely understanding that data can be very useful in understanding where our sticking points are and how we can unstick those sticking points in a meaningful, productive manner. We've surpassed the hurdles of um, user acceptance. So at this point, the, like I said at the beginning, the, the user base at ASU for these dashboards is, is really diverse. People are using this um, at just about every level of the university, from the president um, out to everybody. So, so now it's a question of creating the tools that will move us forward, so being very objective-oriented about the deployment of the dashboards, um, where the priorities are being set, um, whether that's enrollment growth, whether it's um, composition of the student body, whether that's access. Um, I think the dashboards will become more and more purpose-oriented, um, whereas to this point they've been, very, they've been more educational, so sort of broadly trying to bring everybody up to speed about what kind of data we have and what we can do with it. Um, I think we'll find them being more and more um, targeted to specific initiatives um, throughout the university. So whether that's outreach um, in the recruitment cycle or whether it's in reach in terms of degree completion, I think you'll see the dashboards becoming more and more purpose driven. So a 360 is a time where we actually start pulling data for all students to see a complete profile of a student and can start analyzing that data based off of everything we know, not just what's in our student information system, but starting to look at information that we might have in our student life systems as well as our residence life systems. So c getting that complete picture of a student, recognizing that it's not just academics that drive success and engagement within the university, but all aspects of their life while they're here.